What's up guys? JD here. Welcome back to the official channel. Today we are at Lake Party and they've been stocking here every Friday for the last three months at least. I've got some mice tails, I've got some power bait, I got cast masters, I got the whole the whole shebang, the whole sh all the trout stuff. So we're sure to find some. Right now it's June so the water is really warm and on top of that it has been one of those drought seasons so the water is also really low so it's even warmer than it usually is around this time of year and trout do not like warm water so we're gonna see if we can go find a deeper hole where the uh, water is gonna be a lot colder if, when you walk around this lake it's really shallow and you'll see a lot of trout jumping but I mean what I believe is that they kind of just got released and they're confused they're swimming swimming around looking for a spot to settle down looking for colder water you know they don't know the area so they're just looking around trying to find a nice deep hole where they can rest and uh, finally eat feel comfortable enough to eat so we're gonna go try to find one of those deep holes and we're gonna see if we can get on top of them and put our bait right in front of their face and see if we can get them to bite so let's get down to the spot and let's get some poles out there. Let's try a couple things and see if we can find these trout. I got a white mice tail on that one and some green extra scent power bay on this one. Divide and conquer. Oh yeah, it's a lot deeper right here. What we're doing right now is we're hitting every spot on this drop off. So starting about 100 feet that way, there's a slope in the water that goes down and it just drops off from that point. From that point that way is all flat, really shallow. And from that point this way it starts dropping off. So we're gonna hit the different layers all along this way for an hour each each spot about 100 feet down we'll throw it out fish it for an hour or so 100 feet down and we'll keep doing that until we can locate these fish Just got hit. Oh, oh, my lucky charm. Oh, oh. oh, I'm on. I'm on. Hold on, dude. Okay. Woo, we're on, guys. Knock my hat off. Oh, man. It's been a slow morning. Got a little overexcited for this fish. Beautiful fish. Fish. 
Nice little rainbow trout here. Ooh, how should we cook them? Maybe some fish tacos? Oh, I'll be dying for some fish tacos. Ate the whole thing completely all the way down. All right. Oh, got it. All right. We got one on the board. On the, right here, the white mice tail with about a four foot leader. So we're gonna throw out in the exact same spot. I knew the deeper holes would hold a little bit more, so that was uh, roughly 20 minutes. So let's get another one out there and try to get on, maybe there's a school or something out there and we'll get on top of them. So because he hit it so hard and just absolutely swallowed it, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this one also to the same white mice tail. now is when you fish in deep water especially when you have this real light line a lot of people don't know this but when you cast out your weight sinks first fastest I should say and your line also has to sink in order for you to have that that connection from the tip of your rod and a straight line to your weight So what a lot of people do is they'll cast out, let that weight sink and hit the ground, reel until they feel it, and then they set their pull down. And what happens is they'll get slack line all of a sudden and they'll be like, what the heck? And they'll reel in and then they'll get slack line again. And they'll be like, what the heck is going on? And what's happening is there's, your line is up here floating and the weight is at the bottom. And your, when your line sinks, it creates slack in the line because it, there's no tension when it's supposed to be in a straight line from your tip of your rod to your weight. So when that line starts to slowly sl sink, it starts creating slack in the line and you have to reel it up and reel it up and reel it up. So in order to fix that, as you can see, both of my rods have tension in their line instead of a big bow or a lot of slack in the line. To fix that, when you cast out, you let the weight hit the bottom and you hold it. And as that line sinks and creates that slack, you just correct that slack little by little as the line sinks. And it should take about anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds depending how deep the water is. And just be patient, just correct it, correct it. And, you, and every time you correct it, wait about two seconds and see if it creates more slack line if it does just reel in that slack line wait two seconds reel in that slack line and then at some point like right here there's no slack line zero slack line and that means all the line has sunk and now it created a straight line from the tip of my rod to that weight an added benefit to that is when you do get a bite and you see it and you go to pick up that rod and set the hook if you have that slack line you're going to be wasting the majority of that hook set on the slack line instead of pulling in the weight which causes the hook to set 
So it's really important to get rid of that slack line. All right. Come on, another fish. Fish already? Fish already? Oh, that is a bite. That's a bite. That's a little bite, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and set the hook on this because he's nibbling. Come on. Oh, we're on. We're on. We're on, guys. Whoo! I think we found the spot. We landed right on top of that guy. Feels so good on this ultralight. Come on in, buddy. If you've never fished for these trout on an ultralight with two to four pound test, I highly recommend it. So much fun. Yeah, we're on them now, guys. Where is he? Come on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where are you? Feels like a good one. Oh, he's a nice one. Looks roughly the same size, but oh man, he feels like a monster. Oh yeah, buddy. Come on. Oh, we are on them now, guys. We found them. Again, nice beautiful little rainbow trout, the stock trout. You could tell from this clip tail that this is one of the stock trout. Beautiful, beautiful little trout. All right, let's get back out there in the hole. That was a perfect example of why you want to reel in that slack line. The bite was so tiny, so tiny, that I never would have seen it if my line wasn't absolutely in perfect connection from the tip of my rod to the weight. And these trout, either like the first one, hit extremely hard where they just take it, or they hit really, 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 really light. You can barely see it. I know these are stock trout, so they don't have as many habits as a wild trout would normally have as far as spawning and what it eats and natural habitats like that. But they do react to the temperature and they do have seasons. And the, by temperature, I mean the sun being out, the temperature of the water, how high the water is stuff like that they do react to that kind of stuff so one of the keys to finding these fish on any lake and this is not just lake party but on any lake is to figure out what month are you fishing in is it the summer months has it been hot has it been 100 degrees 90 degrees 80 degrees 70 degrees steadily 
because that's going to affect the water temperature. Also, was there a lot of rain this year? So right now, the factors that I'm taking into consideration are it's been hot, it's been in the hundreds, and the water level is really low. So what that tells me is that the water temperature is really warm for this time of year. And what that causes the trout to do specifically is go deep because trout don't like warm water. Trout like cold water. So they're going to hang out really deep. Right now we're finding them. I worked my way down this slope and I found them on the third spot that I hit. So I'm way down here at the bottom of the slope casting as far as I can out and that's where I'm finding them. And that's because the water's low and the temperatures are high so they have to dive deep for safety for cold water so they can breathe if you've ever brought a trout on land even 10 seconds they're done they're dead they need that cold water with the high oxygen down there that's their comfort zone but don't be afraid to try some things out don't be so stuck to a specific spot that maybe last year you caught a bunch of fish because the water temperature com can be completely different or the structure and the layout underneath the water can be completely different than it was the year before. So don't be so tied to one spot. All right, guys. Unfortunately, it's time to pack it up. I didn't bring my ice chest and it is, the sun is beaming. The sun is beaming. So I have caught these fish, caught a couple nice, trout right there and because I don't have a nice chest I can't just leave them in the sun I bled them already bonked them already so they're bled out and everything we try to take care of them as much as we can but I can't leave them out in the sun any longer or they'll go bad and that'd be a waste so I will take my two fish go home make some fish tacos or maybe we can try some things out who knows yeah but anyways Let's grab these fish and let's get out of here while they're still good. Ah oh, man, it sucks though. The fish are just biting. We just found them. We found what they're eating, but I should have brought an ice chest. Next time for sure. I will be back and we'll get more fish. Lots of more fishing coming. The other thing I wanted to let you guys know though is don't be this person. You see that? Don't do that. Okay. I'm gonna grab them. I didn't bring a bag, but I'll go ahead and throw them in my bag for now. I have just my backpack, but whatever. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. See this? Don't be this person nobody wants to fish in garbage always leave the place cleaner than the way you found it not dirtier because everybody already wants to take all of our fishing spots away and not let us park anywhere and a lot of it has to do with a lot of fishermen leaving a lot of garbage around so let's do our part and keep our fishery open and keep it clean okay there's no reason to leave garbage around at this lake there's garbages every hundred feet there's no reason it should be on the ground we did it baby we did it guys didn't get limits but we found them and we got a couple fish oh man it feels good feels good to get away from the river it's been a little slow at the river so Figured I'd come to this lake and get a, get some meat for the freezer, if nothing else. And, whoo, yeah, we found a, I was a little worried at first. I hit the first spot, no bites. Second spot, no bites. Then we went a little deeper and, you know, that's kind of was my end game anyway, was, was to get a little bit deeper to the cold water. And that was my last stop and boom, we found them. So, so I'm thinking maybe, fish tacos maybe grilled fish tacos with some sriracha mayo 
some handmade corn tortillas oh man what do you guys think oh it sounds so good i haven't ate all morning oh it's been about two hours maybe a little bit more and i haven't ate at all so i'm excited i'm starving all right let's get back to the house and cook these things up <laughs> 